Hola, fabulous midlife ladies. Today, I am setting the record straight. Midlife and menopause are not all doom and gloom. Sometimes it can seem like that because a lot changes and we're always chasing our tail, trying to fix things, but midlife, menopause, you know, sure, we've got some new wrinkles, maybe a few extra pounds that love to just hang on for dear life and hot flashes that make us feel like we're training for a career in fire dancing. But here's the one thing that no one tells you. There's always something that nobody tells you, whether it's pregnancy or childbirth or you know what it is. Like there's always something that you never learn until you're actually in it. That's called being a woman. It's like nobody told me about this, but Midlife is actually when things start to shift in the best ways. It's like you hit a secret sweet spot where suddenly everything just starts making sense. You become bolder, you care less about the small stuff, and life feels lighter and freer and way more fun. Why? Because you hit this magical stage where two key things happen. First, you realize that being right isn't nearly as satisfying as it used to be. If you're a mom, if you're a woman breathing air, you know what I mean. Remember when you would argue with your kids over the correct way to put bowls in the dishwasher? Now you're like, Stack it sideways, stack it upside down. I don't even care anymore. Just do the dishes. Just do the damn thing. And second, you finally stop worrying about what other people think. It's like you wake up one day and think, I'm not here to win anyone's approval. I'm here to live my best life. And suddenly it feels like you've unlocked a whole new level of freedom. Letting go of this is just so liberating. So what is this sweet spot that I'm talking about? It's that beautiful time when you stop worrying about every little thing and start living for you. Your kids are older, you got a bit more freedom, and you finally have the wisdom to know that not every battle is worth fighting. This sweet spot is when you start letting go of that desperate need to be right all the time and stop thinking what others think. This is full on woman stuff. This is full on in our DNA, it seems like. Because when I sit and watch other women with their kids or with their partners, especially with partners that they've been with a long time, You can just see this innate desire and belief that they are right all the time. And that's where that expression, happy wife, happy life comes in. It's like, just let her be right. Guys, just let her be right. And then your life will be so easy. Like, why is this? Why do we feel like we need to be right all the time? And I'm not asking this from a place of like you are doing this, I'm asking from a place of like, why do I have this innate desire to feel like I have to be right all the time? Because I do. And I feel like it's a female thing. So how do we, like that really makes up a huge part of who we are for a lot of our life in all of our relationships. So trust me, I've been there. I remember hitting a point where I stopped stressing over whether I had the right opinion about everything. It was like a weight lifted off my shoulders. And once you let go of caring what other people think, you'll realize just how much energy you're wasting trying to fit into everyone else's expectations. Remember that it's none of your business what other people think about you. And you couldn't possibly know what they're thinking about you unless you actually ask them and they tell you. If they haven't told you, you're just making it up from your imagination. And we have, I have a really creative imagination. So I'm going to make up all of these crazy things. I call it using your imagination against yourself. 
But I've learned how to use my imagination for myself. If I find that my imagination has gone off on a tangent and it's creating stuff that isn't in my best, my highest interest, I'll put the brakes on, whoa, and I'll bring it back and and reformulate that. I'll recalculate that. I'll reboot my brain. So if I have, and these are subconscious thoughts, so they just are running the show without us realizing them. So if you want to live a really great life, you want to be aware of, you want to think and feel on purpose all the time. Think and feel on purpose all the time. That's the key to living a great life in midlife or any time of your life. Think and feel on purpose. There's a reason why I keep repeating this because it's in our power. It's in our control. And so if I find that my brain has gone off on a tangent being creative about things that aren't serving me, I'll put the brakes on and then I'll, I'll redirect it. So if I'm going to a room where I don't know anybody, and I do this all the time, I will always put myself in situations where I'll go somewhere by myself and meet a whole bunch of new people that I've never met before by myself. I'm totally okay with that. And if it starts to freak me out a little bit, I'll catch myself, my brain trying to freak me out because it's something new. And I'll redirect it into like, instead of thinking, oh my gosh, um, these people don't like me or these these people think I'm weird for being alone by myself or whatever it is. I just refocus my brain to like, oh, these people are curious about who I am. These people want to hear my story. These people want to make new friends just like me. And then that experience becomes wonderful. So redirecting your brain, thinking and feeling on purpose is the key to getting anything you want. I just went off on a side tangent there, but that's okay. That's okay because let's face it. When most of us were born with an opinion and a deep-rooted need to prove it, that's just kind of like a, a human wiring, especially females. It's like it's encoded in our DNA, the female DNA. As women, we've spent so much of our lives trying to be perfect. Perfect doesn't exist. Perfect is just something that keeps us always never reaching a place because perfect is totally objective subject like it just it could be whatever that you're creating in your brain and even if you did reach that your brain would change it to something else to say no you didn't reach it so whatever so whether it's having the right parenting advice the right career moves or even just the right way to load the dishwasher I swear, if I had a dollar for every time I reloaded the dishwasher behind my kids because they weren't doing it right, I'd be a millionaire. Like, who even cares? Just let's get the dishes clean. But that was in my, you know, like, bowls got to go. I have to consciously tell myself to not even care how the dishes go in the dish. Don't even change that. Just let it be. Let it be. And don't even get me started on arguing with our teenagers you could be 100 percent correct but they will look you in the eye and say no mom you're wrong and there there we are like pulling up google to prove who's right just to win a debate about whether avocados are a fruit or a vegetable right why do we do it because for some reason being right felt like a badge of honor it felt like we ha- is part of who we are. In order for us to be good enough, we have to always be right and have all the answers. That's part of being a mom because you're keeping humans alive. So it's legit. But it's this thing of like, we have to know everything all the time. And it's funny because when our kids are little, they don't know that we're making stuff up. <laughs> and then they get older and they're like, really? Is that true? I'm like, no, I just made it up. But they didn't know the difference if I was right or not. And as they get older, you really have to kind of defend your rightness if you're if you are addicted or committed to being right but that's what we want to do is we want to we want to let that go in midlife we realize that some things just aren't worth the battle we have a shift in perception in our mindset about who we need to be and our rightness and our enoughness The beauty of midlife 
is that we learn to let go. So when we're done raising humans, and I can see how, like for me, I noticed as soon as I had kids, I just went from this fun, fun free person to being like responsible for other human lives. And that's changed who I was and how I showed up. 100%. Because now I'm responsible for these guys and I want to do it right. I don't want to mess them up. I want to make sure that I'm doing it right. When there is no right, you just got to make it up as you go along and do the best you can and trust that you know what you're doing and trust that it's all going to work out. It's a, it's a thing. When you really think about raising human beings, that's why we have this, we need to be right. We need to do it right. We need to, we know what's best for these people. And at one point, everything we did was the only thing that got done for these people. People and that's why we think we know what's best, for, what's best and right for these people because at one point it was it kept them alive, but as they get older, we forget to let go and change our perception and what they need and what we think is right for them. It's just a matter of growing with our children and changing how we show up for them and how we show up for ourselves, how we show up in our lives. We reach a point in midlife where we decide that being right isn't actually the goal anymore. Being happy is. It's like we've graduated from the school of proving ourselves right or just proving ourselves and we're now getting a PhD and who cares? Who the heck cares? (laughs) We let others win the argument about what year Dirty Dancing was released because we know the real victory is in not giving a damn. Don't care. It's okay. It's okay if I'm right. It's okay if I'm wrong. It doesn't even matter. I once got into a 20-minute debate over whether leaving butter out was safe or not. Midlife me now would just say, you know what? Leave the butter out. Keep it in the fridge. Smear it on the walls. Doesn't matter. I'm moving on. It doesn't matter. And that, my friends, is the kind of freedom that we're talking about here. And I get excited when I talk about this because it's all you. You're in control of all of it. Nothing about what I'm saying is outside of our scope of possibility or creating it for ourselves. It's an inside job. I love the ex- that expression, it's an inside job, because if you are looking outside of yourself for any of this, that's when you want to check yourself and go, why am I looking outside? Let's go inward even deeper. Let's go even deeper here and find out what's really going on. That's the key. Like That's why this is so important that you're noticing these things about yourself. I, and I'm... I, I'm guessing that most women are like this. I never want to be a nag. Nagging drives me crazy for my kids, for my partner, whatever it is. And sometimes nagging can come from having to be right or not being able to let go of something. Of course, you don't want to let go of the things that are critical, life-threatening, you know, anything that could threaten your existence. No, but I'm talking about all the other stuff. Really notice yourself. Can I let this go? Does it really matter? When when our kids are growing up, we have to, we want to try to change how we see them and, and parent them. But the one thing is like these thoughts that we have in our head. For me, I have to consciously say, Don't say it out loud. Oh my God, don't say it. Like, cover your mouth. Don't say it. Don't say it. And it's in your brain. Wanting to ask your kid, like you're double checking on their work kind of thing. Like, did you lock the door? Or did you brush your teeth? Or did you make that appointment? Did you pay those bills? Like, we just, and it comes from a place of, helping. We want to make their lives easier. So it's not coming from a place of wanting to control everything. And that for me, it comes from a place of, I know what this takes and I want to use my experience to help you. But sometimes 
Most of the times they need to learn on their own, their own way. It doesn't have to be our way. So I really try to, when I see these questions, these thoughts coming, popping into my brain because I'm thinking and feeling on purpose. I'm like, don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. And I have to consciously talk myself off the ledge of saying the thing because, and they're just used to us saying these things. So it kind of rolls off their back or maybe they'll roll their eyes and they'll be like, yes, mom or whatever. But can you rewire your brain to let go of those things and not have to be in control and have to be right and just let it happen? Just let it happen. Now, the one-two punch that really nails this midlife glow up is letting go of what others think. Think about how many years you've spent worrying about whether our outfit is fashionable enough, if our opinions are right or popular, or if our homes look like something out of a Pinterest board. It's funny, like there just comes a time in midlife where you start to say, I'm going to wear what I want. I'm going to say what I think. I'm going to decorate my house with mismatched furniture because that's what makes me happy. There is a big shift that happens. Like, for example, when I show up on this podcast, I show up three times a week whenever I possibly can to give information. If I know information, I don't want to be a gatekeeper. I want to share it with midlife women who want to make a change, who want to do the work. And I want to share as much as possible. And to me, I don't need to dress a certain way in order for my, for me to think that what I'm telling you is valuable and life-changing. For me, I want to dress in a way that feels comfortable for me because sure, it's a podcast, but it's also on YouTube. So it's a video as well. And I really, this is how I show up today. It's cold and rainy out and I wanted to wear, and my kids have been gone for a while and I wanted to wear my fuzzy sweater that is super warm that my kids gave to me for Christmas because it keeps me warm and it's like getting a hug from them. There's so many reasons why I want to wear this and this isn't like the dressiest of shirts, but it warms my heart and I don't care what people think about what I wear because it what makes me happy. That's the freedom. That is so liberating. It's insane. And here's the truth, ladies. Most people are way too focused on themselves to notice or care. All the things that we're making up in our brain, other people don't care about it at all. The real power comes when you realize that you just do you. Just do you whatever that feels like and it could be different than when it was before kids or during kids you you could be reinventing yourself today I'm always reinventing myself I get excited for every day because I'm like how who do I get to be today the best version of myself just do you I promise you the moment that you let go of what people think or what you think people think you'll discover an inner peace that's better than any self-help book or day spa ever Let's get real. How many times have you caught yourself at the grocery store arguing over the right brand of something? I've been there doing my best detective work to prove my favorite brand is superior. And then one day I just said, who cares if it's like crunchy or smooth peanut butter? Who cares? I'm buying both and putting this nonsense to it. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't occupy space in my brain. It doesn't take up any of my energy. And then there's the classic moment when your coworker is convinced their way of making coffee is better than yours. In your younger days, girls, you would have pulled out a barista level argument to prove her wrong because you know your coffee, you know what makes a good coffee. But now, now you just let her live her truth, drink her subpar coffee and move on with your day. That is midlife freedom right there. So ladies, here is the bottom line. Midlife isn't about giving up or settling down. No, 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 no. It's about letting go of the things that don't serve you. Let go of being right. Let go of what people think. 
or what you think people think. Start living for you and you'll find a kind of joy that can't be argued with or judged. That's the real magic, the real glow up and the kind of freedom we deserve. Thank you for listening. Always, always, always love yourself first exactly as you are and have an amazing day.